この電車は臨海線直通。Hello, it's Adam here, and today you join me in Odaiba, which, like Il O Sin, is an artificial island. And today I'm in front of the Fuji Television headquarters. Now, as I say, like Il O Sin, this is an artificial island, but in this case we're in Tokyo Bay. This island was built in the 1850s for defensive purposes, but now it's a hub of tourism and leisure. Surprisingly, a diver has its own version of the Statue of Liberty. Combined with the backdrop of the Rainbow Bridge, it has become a popular photo spot. Its positioning makes it a perfect optical illusion. Many people think this version is just as large as New York's. But when you get up close, You'll see things are very different because this Odaiba replica of the Statue of Liberty is around one seventh the size of the New York original. Into the past, let's now dive to the year 1865. When Edouard de Lebelay proposed making the Statue of Liberté, a statue representing liberty for the United States, and to show that America and France are mates, designed by sculptor Frederick Bartholdi and set to stand in New York City, on June 17, 1885, the Statue of Liberty did arrive. 200,000 New Yorkers marked the date and greeted the statue in its crates. On July 4, 1889, the people of Paris felt real fine, 'cause Americans in Paris gave them a replica one quarter scale to mark the French Revolution. Oh, what a tale! In April 98, the statue came to Odaiba, Japan, where it was loved by every man. But to mark Japan-France friendship, it was only a loan. And in January 99, it went back home. Odaiba was sad to see the statue leave. So soon, Paris governors did a letter receive from Japan asking for permission to make a new statue. To which the French said yes, so they were no longer blue. In the year 2000, on December 21st, with joy the people of Odaiba were fit to burst, 'cause their new Statue of Liberty was unveiled, standing at around one seventh scale. Then, exactly seven years to the day, National Treasure 2 came out in the U.S. of A. And the Statue of Liberty has seven spikes on her crown. A coincidence, you say? Get out of town. This movie features the Paris statue and stars Nicolas Cage. I say, sacre bleu! He plays a cryptologist cracking codes, like I'm doing in this video, if truth be told. And now back to Adiba 2020. On September 23rd, 2017, the RX Zero Unicorn Gundam statue was unveiled at Diver City Shopping Mall. This 19.7 meter tall, life-size fiberglass reinforced plastic and steel statue is based on a robot of the Gundam series, a Japanese military sci-fi franchise created by Yoshiyuki Tomino and Sunrise, which has spawned TV series, films, manga, novels, video games, and plastic model kits. Some may think this statue is pure kitsch, but it's a huge draw. The engineering is impressive, and the light show entertaining. Considering how hugely popular Gundam is in Japan, an 80 billion yen a year franchise, it makes sense for the series to be commemorated on such a scale. For Gundam fans, this mecha robot must be a kind of mecha. And this isn't the first Gundam statue to stand in Odaiba. On July 7, 2009. The original RX-78-2 Gundam statue was displayed in Shiokaze Park as part of the Green Tokyo Gundam project to raise funds for a greener future. Over four million people visited this statue in the 52 days it was on display, and fans were sad to see it go. However, 
In August 2011, the RX-78-2 Gundam statue returned to a diver in pieces, with proceeds from ticket sales to this display going to victims of the Tohoku earthquake. People could even sit on the robot's hand while lending theirs. Then, on April 19th the following year, the full RX-78-2 Gundam statue returned to a diver, this time in front of Diver City Shopping Mall, where it stood until March 2017. Again, Gundam fans were sad to see it go, but they didn't need to wait long until the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam was unveiled on the very same spot. On October 26, 2000, this statue, Flame of Freedom by Marc Couturier, was unveiled in Odaiba, Japan, to commemorate the relationship between France and Japan, as was the case with the loan of the Il Osan replica Statue of Liberty. This 21 meter tall statue is covered in gold leaf, so on a sunny day like this, it's extremely eye catching. The work really benefits from being raised up on a concrete plinth to a total height of 27 metres. Situated in the wide open space of Symbol Promenade Park, it seems taller than I remember. According to the artist, this work is meant to express friendship between France and Japan through the image of an eternally burning candle flame. OK everyone, now I've got something very exciting to show you. Come on. Follow me, come on. Odaiba is very easy to explore on foot. After the Japanese bubble economy burst, Odaiba came back to life in the late 90s as a tourist and leisure zone. Transportation links improved and several large companies moved their headquarters to the island. Today much of Odaiba feels like a place that was designed on computer, all glass, metal and concrete but there are parks and green spaces to be found, where flowers bloom and birds frolic. Odaiba is one of the few man-made seashores in Tokyo Bay, where the waterfront is accessible. There are even a couple of sandy beaches where, even in November, friends and families picnic and paddle. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and check the description below for details on how to book an art English lesson with me at Miyazarate Art School. See you next time!